Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 13th, 2022, current on 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple tropical cyclones to be forming over the next several days, including two that could be forming in the Atlantic Basin. Where could they be heading and just how busy could the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season get? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic and parts of the East Pacific this afternoon, we noticed that right now we have a pretty active setup. We have multiple tropical waves out here in the tropical Atlantic. Now, none of these pose any risk for developing over the next several days. These will all be kind of contained by dry Saharan air and pretty strong upper level winds cutting across that area for now. Uh, but we also have Invest Area 92E that's over here. This one has a really high likelihood of becoming a tropical storm or hurricane over the next several days in the East Pacific. Another tropical uh, system that could end up developing back here closer to portions of Central America and a disturbance of energy down here, some tropical disturbance energy that could get itself into a tropical depression or storm over the next several days as it heads off towards the Yucatan Peninsula. So looking at everything here, this is Invest Area 92E with the highest probability of development. This has a 90% chance of developing over the next five days as it heads off towards the west or northwest. We have a system here close to Guatemala City and also Central America. Now, this will also have a shot at developing over the next several days. Currently, only a 30% chance from the National Hurricane Center, uh, but this will continue to move off towards the west-northwest, but could stall in this area and could be a land concern to portions of coastal Mexico and Central America over the next several days. And then in the Atlantic Basin, we have this disturbance. Now, this has not been designated with anything, but this could become Invest Area 93L in the tropical Atlantic. And the disturbance is located somewhere right in about here. And this has a 30% chance also of developing over the next several days as it heads off towards the, the northwest here and it eventually curves back towards Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula here. So we take a look here at Invest Area 92E. Again, we can see that this morning, or re really this morning and afternoon, we've had a disorganized area of shower and thunderstorm activity sitting uh, several hundred miles off the coast here of Mexico. Now, this is beginning to consolidate pretty nicely here. If we take a look at the visible imagery, we notice that we do have some westerly winds here and then easterly winds here, suggesting that we do have a broad area of circulation now, this is still very elongated. You notice that it's not a closed circulation yet. We still have pretty elongated west to east flow like this. So we're not dealing with a closed circulation, but there's an elongated area of low pressure that's somewhere in about here. And that elongation will try to close off over the next several days as this begins to head more off towards the north and west here. Now, the latest HWARF model, a hurricane-specific model for this particular storm, we noticed that over the next several days, the upper-level environment will be quite favorable and will allow for some additional development of this. And there is a nice anticyclonic flow around here. So this could get uh, itself a storm name or even a hurricane over the next several days as it heads off towards kind of the northwest here. This is no longer really expected to be a land concern because this is expected to now stay pretty far off the coast of Mexico. So land concerns here are dropping for this. Now, shifting gears into the Atlantic Basin, we have a new system that, once again, could be designated as Invest Area 90, 93L uh, with over the next several days. We noticed that we have a disorganized area of shower and thunderstorm activity today down here closer to Central America and Panama. Now, over the next several days, we are expecting that there will be some upper-level wind shear to contend with, and the fact that uh, really... Anything that does try to form in here will be in close proximity to land and could get shoved inland across portions of Central America. If I take a look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, for reference, what you really want to look for in a healthy storm is these deeper oranges and reds here. That indicates higher cyclonic spin in a healthier cyclonic storm. Now we notice on the GFS forecast, you kind of notice that we get an area of vorticity to spin up within 24 hours or so. Now, whether this is the GFS being overly biased to convective contamination, meaning that we have an increased amount of convection leading to increased amounts of spin, that's one possibility. 
But the GFS does kind of pivot this around very close here to Panama. And we notice that two more storms form out here. Well, this is 92 or 92E over here in the East Pacific, 93E, uh, which will soon be designated, and then could be 93L. Now we notice that this eventually does kind of pivot northward. And we get a pretty decent storm on the model by Thursday. Now, is this solution necessarily viable? Well, let's go ahead and look at the upper level environment. On the GFS, the upper level environment, there is actually some favorability here briefly. We actually do have a little bit of an anticyclonic flow, which again, basically anticyclone aloft leads to converging air at the surface and that leads to upward moving air. Basically all signs that point towards increased amounts of thunderstorm activity down here in the Caribbean. And this actually may lead to a storm. There's a decent upper level environment but the one problem that we're going to run into here is if you look here at the 500 millibar heights here, so this is looking at up about 18,400 feet, looking at the strengths of the ridges and the troughs in the atmosphere, so highs and lows is really what we're kind of looking for. And we notice that we have a pretty strong kind of death ridge over here across portions of the mid, uh, kind of the, the mid south here and over across portions of the plains. This will provide extreme heat for this part of the world. But what this also does, it's strengthening the ridge to its north, which means that the flow generally is one that is favored to force storms into Central America. Now, if this can form further enough, uh, you know, further eastward and enough distance away here from Central America, this actually may have a chance to pivot up and around. There is a trough that is over here. So basically a big area of low pressure that's sitting up here that may be able to weaken that ridge just enough where this gets a little bit of an axis and it is able to move northward. And that's what happens here on the GFS. This skirts very close here to Central America as that ridge is still holding very strong. There's another trough here that's kind of eroding that ridge, but the overall flow is sending this thing into Central America or the Bay of Campeche at that time. Now, the European model, for, on the other hand, does sort of agree that, okay, there might be a weak area of low pressure that begins to develop here by Wednesday afternoon. But notice here on the Euro, it's much further south towards Panama and a further south trajectory with a strengthening ridge over here is basically a recipe for this getting blasted into Central America. And that's exactly what happens. Now, some of that energy, there is some energy that does lift northward very close to water here. And then some of that energy actually moves then out into the Bay of Campeche by, you know, within about a week or two from now. So there is the potential that we could be dealing with a storm, even if it doesn't form here, we could be dealing with something down the road here that closes in on the Yucatan Peninsula and then over in the Bay of Campeche. That is certainly a possibility. The GFS ensembles for this time continue to paint much of the same story with a very good amount of clustering that's focused down here closer to Central America uh, by 78 hours from now, this is by 2 p.m. on Thursday. If we move out to hour 84, so this is 8 p.m. on Thursday, we notice that the GFS has a large amount of areas of low pressure. All these red, red numbers here, this is indicative of where areas of low pressure could be. Now, there is some members that are over here across and inland into Central America, but there's a larger clustering that stays offshore. Now, the National Hurricane Center so far has leaned a little bit to the GFS solution in terms of uh, what they're forecasting with the 30% chance of development. The European ensembles from the Zero Z run do show some similar. I mean, they do have a storm or a weak depression down here by Thursday night going into Friday, but most of those members do end up inland. So the bottom line is we could be looking at a storm that ends up within this region over the next couple of days. And we could also be dealing with a storm that develops out here in the subtropical Atlantic. If we look here at the GFS for, or I'm sorry, the European forecast, we notice that a storm does try to develop out here uh, in the long range. And this is because that mesoscale convective system diving down and we could be dealing with a storm that tries to develop uh, after that time. It actually looks like this could be the main one and there could be another one developing back here. So we're gonna have to watch that very closely. 
Now, if we take a look at the actual environment here, this is the 850 millibar vorticity. So again, spinning the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground, but this is the actual observed from satellite data. We notice that, again, here's that elongated area of low pressure associated with INVEST 92E. There's that other system in the Eastern Pacific. And then here's the system that we're watching in the Atlantic. Uh, now, we'll be watching this very closely to see how that changes. Right now, I'm not seeing any bundled area of, areas of vorticity that would indicate a storm, uh, but we'll have to watch that very closely. And the upper ocean heat content definitely goes to support a storm being in this region. Very high values up here supporting warm waters, even at depth, which means the increased likelihood of a storm forming. So if all else turns out equal, we may have a storm over the next couple of days. All right. Well, that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.